Welcome back to Ghost Pirate Entertainment. I'm your host, Kanan Becker, and today we talk about the greatest female horror villains of all time. So today's video is a collab with Kit Tinsley of Everything Fear. He just dropped his video, his list, over on the Everything Fear channel. And then later on this week, on Saturday, me and him are going to get together on a live and talk more about these lists and basically argue and tell each other that you're stupid for what you pick. And maybe even duke it out because we don't agree. <laughs> Doubtful, but you never know. <laughs> no, but we are going to get together and talk more about it. And if you guys would like to check out his list, go over to the Everything Fear channel. The link is down in the description. So I've really enjoyed lately seeing these amazing female heroes in these different horror movies. Stuff like Ready or Not, You're Next. The, the most recent Wrong Turn movie had a really great strong leading lady, so to speak. But just in general, it's been nice and it's been refreshing because we haven't sadly seen this. You know, I mean, we do have some, but not as many as I think we should. But the other thing that I've been thinking about a lot is how little we see female villains. You just don't see it. I feel like we should have more female villains as well as heroes, but definitely villains. So with that, here's my top 10 greatest female horror villains of all time. So kicking off this list is Martha Allenby of The She-Wolf of London, which is a classic horror movie from the black and white era, a movie that you don't hear talked about very often. But I love her because I stumbled across this movie just being a fan of werewolves, and I was really surprised, spoiler alert, I mean it is like a 70, 80 year old or more movie, but still, I do recommend checking it out because I am going to spoil it real quick, but she plays this awful stepmother, Cinderella almost, type of figure who basically drives our female lead to the brink of sanity, making her think that she is a werewolf, basically to steal money, so to speak. And in reality, it's her the whole time, but she plays this really strong character because the whole movie, you think she's this consoling, loving, motherly type of figure, and in reality, she's this evil monster. And especially for as old of a movie this is, that deep and messed up of story is not something you saw a lot and just very creepy and disturbing. And I, I just love it. I think it's a really great old movie, like I said, not enough people talk about. Next up, we go to number nine, and that would be Angela Baker from Sleepaway Camp. And you could say so many things about this movie. It is so beloved in the horror world, and I don't feel like I could ever make a list like this without including Angela Baker. And Felisa Rose is amazing. Like, she's amazing to her fans. Just in general, this is just such a unique character. The fact that it's an early transgender type of thing which I'm not gonna get into, but it's just a powerful subject and she did it with such grace and this character is just insane and fun and it's just a really strong but enjoyable character that is so beloved. I definitely wanted to put her on this list. Next we go to number eight and that's Esther Coleman from Orphan. And I remember the first time I saw this movie, I hadn't heard anything about it. So I had no idea of the spoiler. And if you have not seen Orphan, pause this right now, go watch Orphan and come back because I am going to spoil it. I can't help it. It's one of the major things about this character. It's impossible to not spoil. So just a spoiler warning going forward in general, a lot of these I'm going to probably spoil a little bit because it's hard to talk about any of these characters without giving some stuff away that might be important to the script. So when I first saw this, I had no idea about the spoiler that at the end you find out, holy shit, this whole time this is a woman and that it's based on a true story. It was just mind blowing. For much of this movie, you feel really sorry for this poor little girl and you're like, oh God, you know, the PTSD and all these things that she must have gone through to make her have all this baggage and whatnot. And then she starts to get more and more creepy and you're like, Filling bags, you're like, dude, this is she's evil, and I'm hating on this little kid, but it's still, it's a little kid. It makes you feel bad. And then all of a sudden, bam, the spoiler, the fact that 
Holy shit, this whole time, this little girl is actually a full-grown woman. She does such a good job of playing this role. The makeup is done so well to make her look like a 30-year-old woman at the end. There's just so many things about this movie, how psycho she is. But either way, she's just a really great character and it is a lot of fun. Next, we go to Samara from The Ring. So I remember I was in my early 20s when this movie came into theaters. And I'll never forget, like, when she first comes through the TV, just, oh my god, like, it scared me so bad. I'm, like, sitting there riveted in the theaters, and it's just so much fun. This character is so sympathetic, and you do feel sad in a way for her, but at the same time, you can't get past how just absolutely terrifying she is and so there's no way i could do a list like this without putting such a creepy scary character in it so with that i definitely got to put her on here and it's really just based on she was just creepy and just scary <laughs> i mean that's why there, she doesn't give dialogue it's not based on any of that it's just simply based on how scary that character was and how much it scared me all right, now we go to Julia from Hellraiser. And she's a character you don't hear people talk about much, really, at all. And it's weird to me because she is such an integral part of the Hellraiser movie. Did you love this? And she's so twisted and so demented. And yet, you focus on the Cenobites, you focus on other elements, but you don't focus on her. And man, so twisted, so like just creepy. And as she does this deep dive into evil as the movie goes, like she just becomes more and more messed up. Just a really great character. And like I said, just such an integral part to this movie and one that just isn't talked about enough. All right, number five is Ginger from Ginger Snaps. She's on this list because one, I had a huge crush on her back in the day always have loved her just thought she was awesome and i'm a huge huge fan of werewolves and werewolf movies <laughs> just this movie in general doesn't get enough love and it's one that i have always really enjoyed and have recommended numerous times on different lists that i've done because it's just a movie that doesn't get enough love and she's a character that is so compelling. This movie just does such a good job of transforming her into this monster and making that whole thing like a metaphor for puberty and just the changing that we all go through and, and just the way it was done in this, she was just like sexy and gorgeous and yet this vicious, bloodthirsty creature that you're like holding your uh, junk like, dude, don't cut off my dick. <laughs> Seriously does a great job in this and the actress does a great job. It's just fun and it's a great character All right next we go to the mother of all horror monsters and that would be Pamela Voorhees My sweet innocent Jason My only child Jason. And I know you're saying what she's this far back, but the ones in front of her, to me, are all epic. I mean, really, the top four or five, any of them could kind of be switched around. I love all these, so please don't come at me, because I love Pamela Voorhees. Without Pamela, you don't have Jason. Without Jason, horror is missing its left butt cheek. Seriously, guys, like, who doesn't love Jason? And Pamela Voorhees, she was the beginning of it. I mean, in the first movie, it wasn't Jason killing people. It was Pamela, and that's the big shocker. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Seriously, I mean, she's the OG. She's the original killer, and she's what led us to have Jason. And she plays that role so well of just being, like, sympathetic and sweet, but then also just demented as fuck and just psycho and just... Ugh! Just seriously a terrifying character without prosthetics without anything other than just being this crazy ass woman who's gonna try to kill you i mean that's awesome and next up at number three we go to annie wilkes of misery when i was growing up in bakersfield my favorite thing in all the world was to go to the movies on saturday afternoons for the chapter plays cliffhangers i know that mr man and this is the same type of thing she's not wearing prosthetics she's not some crazy scary looking monster this is just a regular woman 
who for a chunk of this movie you think is this awesome person and you're like oh she's so sweet you know and she's taking care of him and then when she turns and you start to see her true colors man she's as horrifying as any monster in my opinion i mean she just does an amazing job i mean Kathy Bates got an Academy Award for this role. I mean, what else can you say? I mean, for horror, well, you don't see Academy Awards, right? And this is a true blue horror movie, it really is. But she just did that good of a job in this role and I could easily have put her at number one and I almost did. Like I said, all the top four of these are pretty much interchangeable. But I am just in love with this character. She's always terrified me and definitely deserves to be on this list. God, I love you. Next up at number two is the Queen Xenomorph from Aliens. And I mean, I know, come on, she's not human, but nobody said this was the top 10 human, you know, female human list. I mean, it's just the top 10 female horror villains. This is one of the most terrifying creatures ever created in any horror movie and she really is just an amazing villain that doesn't have to say anything that just the look and that viciousness is all you need and man so to me you can't make a list like this without putting one of the scariest creatures ever created on it especially when it fits the criteria just the fact that she's juxtaposed to Sigourney Weaver I mean, you had to put an amazing villain, right? Because Sigourney Weaver is one of the greatest top 10, you know, type of heroes ever in a movie. Come on! So like, if you're gonna do that, you gotta have a top 10 villain. And they did, they designed this monster to be the most terrifying thing you could possibly come up with. And it really was. I mean, the Xenomorphs were scary as it was, but then you put the queen, she was bigger, badder, stronger, more vicious, more terrifying. Enough said. She's definitely my number two. All right, guys. And my number one, you might be saying, what? I can't believe he's got anybody higher than the Queen Xenomorph for any of these other ones, right? But you're forgetting one. One that is not talked about enough. Okay, for one. For two, it hits home. This is a character that scares me personally because she reminds me so much of my own mom. And I'm not gonna get into my own personal history, right? But let's just say I come from some really bad abuse and this character has always reminded me so much of the abuse, abuse sorry, getting a little uh, worked up and a little emotional here because it really does terrify me. But she really is just what really actually scares me to my core. And that would be Margaret White from Carrie. I want to be normal. I want to start to try and be a whole person before it's too late for me to <laughs> But I've always related to the film Carrie and to the character of Carrie, I'm sorry. I've always related to her because in a lot of ways she was me. You know, and I felt the pain that she went through. But this character so much like my mom, um, very religious to the point where they twist it and make it into this monster. I'm not trying to put down Christianity or religion. That's not what I'm trying to do here. But like anything, it can be twisted and become something that it's not meant to be. And in the case of my mom and in the case of the character in this movie, they twist it and they make it into a weapon and they twist it and make it into something of hate. And to me, it's something that I can relate to. And it is truly scary and terrifying to me. And so that's why there was no way I could make a list like this without putting the most scary character, in my opinion, ever made in a horror movie starring a female role or whatever than Margaret White. After the blood comes the boys, like sniffing dogs. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd love to see down in the comments some of your list because I love seeing what you guys have to say. Also, don't forget to go over to Everything Fear and check out Kit Tinsley's list. 
And with that, please hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell because that is the best way to keep track of this channel and when I post videos like this and I try to post videos like this at least two times every week. I also want to give a huge thank you to my patrons because your support means so much to me. And if you would like to find out more about becoming a patron, the link is down in the description. And like always, thank you so much for watching. Please crush that like button and remember, horror can be fun. I will see you guys next time.